God bless you. Thank you for tuning in. It's an honor today to be able to interview Father Bogdan Bucher. Father is a professor of patristics of dogmatics at St. Vladimir Seminary, a seminary very dear to American Orthodox Christians. He's originally from Romania. He and his wife and children are now American citizens and live here. He got his PhD at Marquette University and has been offering his talents to the church. Father, it's a joy to have you. Thank you. Our subject today is an Orthodox entry into scripture. And Father, I'm wondering if you would share with us how Orthodox Christians understand the scriptures, especially how we interpret them liturgically. Well, one thing I think we need to say is that scripture is for us, as it was for the church uh, from its beginning, part of life. Part of life together with liturgical celebration, part of life together with the ascetical uh, um, efforts, um, part of life as is service to the poor and so forth, as his mission, as his preaching and so forth. Um, and as such, it should not be detached from these other facets of Christian life. And since you mentioned the liturgical life in particular, these two facets need to go together. Part of how we understand the interpretation of Scripture is that these documents that are from a different time about things that have happened a long time ago become holy Scripture to us to the extent to which indeed we interpret them, we exegete them. And this happens in this togetherness of reading scripture, participating in a liturgical life, engaging in ascetic practices as much as, as, much as we do, um, and in the other practices of the church. Sometimes there are specific texts that come to life and become meaningful to us in the course of our liturgical participation. There's an example, uh, the vision of the prophet Isaiah. We read in chapter 6 of Isaiah that he saw in a vision the Lord enthroned on a high and lofty throne. And we know that that high and lofty throne is the visionary counterpart of the Ark of the Covenant, which was the Holy of Holies. Mm. Because he finds himself out of place, he's not a priest, so he shouldn't be in the temple. He's overwhelmed also by this presence. Um, he needs help, and God sends a seraph from the two seraphs attending to purify the prophet, to purify his lips with a hot coal, a living coal. Um, well, we read this text and it's a visionary text from a culture a long time ago. And we can say, well, there is a distance between us and Isaiah and what to make of this text. The way we read this in church is simply by showing up <laughs> as participants in the liturgy, because we understand that hot coal to be the foreshadowing of what becomes real to the Christian when we receive the Holy Eucharist. Mm. And so um, what Isaiah the prophet experiences is what we also experience more truly. Um, so the continuity between the experience of the prophet and the experience that is given to us individually and corporately in church is a very important element of interpreting the text. And as we participate, we sing in church that which Isaiah hears in his vision, holy, 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 the chant of the seraphim. We have taken that revealed song of the seraphim and made it our own. So we sing with the seraphim what the seraphim are singing. And we recognize the Lord whom Isaiah saw we call him the Lord Jesus Christ. This is why our iconographic tradition of this vision shows Christ as the enthroned Lord of, of Isaiah. And finally, when we partake of the, of the Holy Eucharist, we recognize it as being that which Isaiah the prophet only partially, in a foreshadowing way, participated of. And as a matter of fact, the spoon, the liturgical spoon with which the priests or the bishop or who, this, the priest usually communes um, his congregation, we call tongs, which is exactly what in the text appears to be 
what the seraph uses in order to take the hot coal, since it mm. is holy, and he can't touch that, and touch Isaiah's mouth. And we also read scripture together with the fathers, and they tell us, St. John Chrysostom, St. Ephraim the Syrian, St. Germanos, um, that which Isaiah uh, only, uh, that which only touched Isaiah's lips, we partake of, we eat, we ingest. That which the seraph did not dare touch is what we receive and it transforms us. And so to go back to the text, now the text is no longer a text from far, far away, from a long time ago about something else or somebody else, but it is about us directly. Mm -hmm. And so liturgical consumption of the text is what we're after. Father, you mentioned that we read the scriptures with the fathers. In common American experience, many Christians are used to reading the Bible as a private devotion. Uh, they read the scriptures at home, uh, in, perhaps in their study, uh, etc., with a confidence in what they might call private interpretation. Uh, what do you mean read, that we read the Bible with the fathers? Well, <clears throat> we read together with our brothers and sisters, the best of our brothers and sisters, um, many of whom have been officially canonized, um, many of whom are unknown to us, perhaps the majority are unknown to us. But um, we're never alone in the church. We're part of a community united by the body and blood of the risen Christ. And we don't do anything by ourselves. The only thing we can do by ourselves is, is be lost. Mm. And so uh, why not take insights from those who have read Scripture with greater devotion than we can muster? And those who have been, by the grace of God, enlightened to find meanings in the text that we are only to benefit from. It's a bit arrogant to, to discount all these voices. When, when I say the fathers, I don't mean the fathers of the 2nd century, of the 4th century, or the 10th century. Um, there is a continuum of spiritual experience. Um, and so we read the text with the church a synthesis of the fathers, a, a distillate of the fathers, we find in the, in the liturgical worship, in the hymnography of the church, which is the most, the most easily accessible uh, voice of the fathers as a whole, distilled through the experience of the church, the ritual of the church, the iconography of the church, but also individual, um, individual writers uh, who have toiled over the scriptures and from whom we can learn. And some, some things we learn from them is that Scripture does not, not one, not one verse of Scripture, not one story in Scripture, not one line in Scripture has a single meaning. Because Scripture is the, the verbal, um, how should I put it, the verbal incarnation of the Word of God. Our relation is with the Word of God. The Word of God is incarnate, we say, right? Becomes a human being one of us, of the same essence with us, the Word of God also becomes intextuated, that is, becomes the text that we're reading. Well, it means that it is infinite in, its, in what it can engender in us mm -hmm. through the many, many infinite number of layers of meaning. And so to travel this, uh, this vast um, um, edifice which the church is, which the scripture is, many, many doors opening many rooms, some known to us, some unknown to us, depth that, uh, that are hard for us to even uh, imagine. Well, we travel them with those who have traveled before us, and we gather from them um, that Scripture is rich, that Scripture nourishes and transforms, and that we don't read by ourselves. We read together with our brothers and sisters. Thank you very much, Father, for entertaining this interview. Thank you very much. Patristic Nectar Publications is pleased to present the proceedings of the 2022 annual PNP conference entitled Holy Orthodoxy, Presenting the Christian Faith. This seven lecture series is designed to present a broad exposure of the contours of the Christian faith, both to prepare inquirers and catechumens for holy baptism, as well as deepening and renewing the faith of believers. 
These lectures are delivered by a collage of catechists. Four by the deeply respected petrologist Archimandrite Maximus Constas, with additional single lectures by Father Josiah Trenum, Father Bogdan Bukur, and Dr. Tikhon Pino. For these, as well as other conferences and available titles, please visit our website at patristicnectar.org.